Hi there, Stampers. It's Lisa with Queen Bee Creations here with today's class. Um, today we are going to be making this fun fold card that you are going to be so surprised how easy this is to make because it looks like it's, you know, it expands into something wonderful, could look exciting on a counter, um, out for display. People are going to absolutely be wowed by it, but it's actually kind of easy and I can't wait to show you. So we are playing around with the classic letters stamp set, and this is a stamp set that's only available online. Stampin' Up! is now releasing things um, online that will never be published in a catalog, and this is one of them. And I was actually kind of excited about it because letters is what got me started in Stampin' Up! Like I was a hardcore creative memories scrapbooker back in the day and we had those little sticker letters and I was constantly running out of a certain color, a certain letter, whatever. I never had what I needed. And someone said, oh, you need Stampin' Up! Stampin' Up! has alphabet stamps and then you just buy the ink and sure enough they did and I loved it and then they learned about color coordination and all those fancy things and there was no turning back. I was just hooked. And so the chance to play with letters has been fun. Um, of course, you can use them for scrapbook um, headings and things, but today we're gonna be making a card and I have a tutorial for you of six cards and they are all using this stamp set. So here we are down on my desk. I love that this has all of the letters and all of the numbers. And look, it's even got two A's, which I thought was super cool. It's got two P's. Um, some of those letters that we would use frequently, there's duplicates of, which is helpful. It's got your little punctuation signs down here. And then it's got all these little leaves that allow you to make it kind of fancy. And they are arced to fit on the various letters. So let's go ahead and get started with our card. This card has a Orchid Oasis base to it. And then these are backed in Highland Heather. And then down here, this is again, Orchid Oasis and the designer series paper of the color family of the 2022 to 2024 in colors. And I'm doing it this time using Starry Sky. So it is going to be very similar, but a little different because, you know, we only have so many pieces of the designer series paper in a pack. And so I wanted to give a little variety. So this piece here is 11 inches by four and a quarter. And I scored it at five and a quarter because if I scored it at five and a half, we would not have this end. I'm scoring at five and a quarter and then ten and a half. And that's going to give me this little half inch that's going to be my connector. And so that's going to link the two card bases together, making it extra long. So if I didn't shorten it down a little bit, we wouldn't have that little overhang unless we were using 12 by 12 paper. Stampin' Up! does offer 12 by 12 paper. I am asked that quite frequently. Why don't we have that anymore? We do. It's just available in color family packs. It's not available per color anymore. Okay, so now, like I said, I want to connect these two together. So I want to put adhesive along here. This piece right here is going to be our connector. And because it's a moving card, I'm going to use tear and tape. Come on, give. Because this is a stronger adhesive, it's going to allow it to get more movement. Without falling apart. So I'm going to butt these two together right up against that score line. 
and then matching top and bottom. And that's giving me this extra long base. off just a little bit. Right. So now we have this really long card base and I wanted to put some designer series paper in the back. I am using this Stargazing DSP. I bought the DSP but did not buy the stamp set. So I'm just going to be using the paper by itself. I think it's really pretty as a background, even though I don't have the stamp set. So I'm gonna put one of these in each section. Now, because I made this four and a quarter by five and a quarter, my each panel is four and a quarter by five and a corner. It means these are going to be four by five. Remember, with the stamp and seal, we don't need to cover the entire back of the paper. It's going to stick with just an inch in each corner. That will save you a lot of money in the long run to not coat the back of your paper. And then this one's going to go on the front of the card. So I'm going to put that one out here. You'll notice this sheet of designer series paper out of our bundle or out of the pack has more blues to it. So I'm using Starry Sky and Azure Afternoon. This one had more purples to it. So it's got some Blackberry Bliss and some Highland Heather up in there. That's how I ended up with this one. Okay, so the inside pieces, those cross members started out the same and that they are 10 and a half scored at five and a quarter. Okay, so that's gonna make them match the bottom of our fold of the card. Then I scored in half again. So this is at two and five eighths. Two and a half. Okay. Helene's asking about the base, maybe. Each piece, one of these was 11 inches by four and a quarter. I scored at five and a quarter and 10 and a half. And that half inch overhang is my connector. The next piece was 10 and a half scored at five and a quarter. Each of these is three by or four by five. Then these are an inch and a half by 10 and a half. And at first they're scored at five and a quarter. And then I'm scoring again at the halfway mark in here at two and five eighths because half of five and a quarter is two and five eighths. Does that help? Of course, all of the printed directions and diagram and all that's going to be in the tutorial for purchase. Okay, so now I have these two pieces that are going to be the cross members inside. And so what I'm going to want to do is butt one up over here 
and one up over here. So if I had just had the one score line, you can see how they match up. But I scored it in half here, so it's going to pop up. Now, if it's easier, you can go ahead and use liquid glue. Because you can wiggle it some. And we're wanting to be sure that we're way up into this corner and butt it up. So I'm kind of wiggling it around, making sure that I am flush here and I'm flush here. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. So just a little bit of glue and around the outside. Someone told me they had trouble doing the lines really skinny like they're supposed to be. And so someone told her just to make dots with the liquid glue and just doing a dot, dot, dot allowed her to do not a lot. So when she uses the liquid glue, she says dot, 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 not a lot. <laughs> that was kind of cute. It'd be a good thing to teach kids if you're teaching kids to craft so that they didn't use too much glue is you just dot, dot, dot. Now I know it seems a little counterintuitive that we put our designer series paper down first, but you can see now that we're putting in our cross members why that had to be in there first. So it's kind of fatter the one side than it is the other. So my guess is this will probably take extra postage because it is kind of thick. But I think you'll agree it's kind of worth it. And it might be one of those you just only give to people you're going to see in person. I don't know. But I love things that are... Pack a wow but are still simple to make. That's my favorite thing to share with you is something that you can look at it and think, oh my gosh, that's going to be so hard. And then we make one and you figure out it's not. I mean, granted, there are some cards out there that are complicated. Um, but I like the combination of, wow, it's easy. So I have some exciting news to share with you and that um, bonus days is coming back. Stampin' Up! has in the past done what they call bonus days. And for every $50 that you spend in July, you're going to get a coupon for $5 that you can redeem in August. So from July 6th through the 31st, you can earn these coupons. So if you place a... $50 order, you get one. If you place a $100 order, you get two. If you were to place a $95 order, you still only get one. So if you can round up, add the glue on there, you get another free $5 and it basically pays for itself. And those work in conjunction with my um, royalty rewards too. So if you are one of my customers and you buy from me, hopefully you're keeping track of your purchases. I do have a tracking form for you to track all that. Um, and when you reach the limit, you contact me and you get a free stamp set. You get a, um, you get a spending spree of, I think it's $45 on me. So it's so my way of saying thank you to those of you who shop with me, in addition to the free tutorials and a bunch of other perks that you get.
But bonus days is starting on July 6th because that's the day that the online exclusives are released. They're going to be releasing some really cute stamp sets into our online store on the 6th, which is, oh, I didn't flip my calendar, it's Thursday. So next Thursday, when we do our next card, bonus days will have started and they have the cutest little stamp set with a little truck punch. I think that's going to be super popular. So my advice is if you're interested in it, hop on it right away because they always tell us that things online, these, these online exclusives, as they're calling them, are while supplies last. Now, our hope is if they're popular enough, Stampin' Up! will go ahead and restock them. Stamp sets are easy enough because they make those in Utah at their um, factory in Kanab. So those are easy, but the punches all come from China. So if they sell out, um, when they come back in, it might be a while. Okay, so I'm laying out my little postage stamp things. I used scraps of my white cardstock and I used the postage stamp punch to punch them out. Now, some people prefer to punch them out and then go ahead and do your stamping. So each letter is its own stamp. I'm gonna bring in the Starry Sky ink. And then I'm kind of just aligning them with my grid paper, kind of picking one in the middle. Now I'm white on white, which makes it a little harder to see. So you may want to put some colored paper underneath or you may want to um, stamp first and then punch. That would be a really quick, easy way to be able to move it around and ensure that you are centered. I even like that they have these little marks to the side that tell you when you're centered, making it really easy to punch out. Because these are individual letters, um, you could, if you wanted to, um, take a ruler and like find the middle. See, they look like they're almost two inches. So you could, you know, center it in here, make a little mark to the side, um, you know, use pencil marks to line up where you want it to go. Or Like I said, we'll, we'll do more on the front letters because they're going to be together. So you'll be able to see easier. Again, this is something you would probably want to line up on the grid paper so that the side of your R is on a grid paper, the bottom of your R is on a grid paper. Then you're going to do the same thing with your block. and new ink pads, so they're coming out really dark. <laughs> Which I guess is good for our card, but make sure I clean these right away so they don't stain my stamps. Luckily, they are not bubbling. Sometimes when you have a new ink pad, they will bubble on the surface, and you'll notice that in your stamping. What that means is that it is too juicy and you would want to take the back of a spoon and rub that all over so that it pushes the ink down into the pad because they are designed on purpose to store with it upside down. So if you look, the, when the ink pad stores, it's it's letting the ink puddle to the top of the pad instead of the bottom of the pad. That is on purpose so that the top would be nice and juicy. But sometimes when they are brand, brand new, 
it might be a little too juicy. I have heard of people having to take a paper towel and pat it down a little bit. I usually find that the back of the spoon is enough that it helps me, you know, get rid of the bubbles. A little wonky. Apparently there's something on my stamp. Hmm. Interesting. There's a little something straight across on the bottom. It may be that when the photopolymer stamps are made, they are in a mold. And in order for them to pop out of the mold, they have basically been greased. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, so there is some kind of a film on the stamps that helps them release from the mold. So you may find that when you very first get a stamp set, you may need to clean them off first with maybe some stamp and mist or rinse them off in the sink. Some people suggest stamping in them, you know, just a couple times on a, not on a project, but just to get them used to the ink and get rid of the coating that's on there. And I'm cleaning them right away, which is not something I normally do while I'm still on camera. But because this is a dark color that has some red tones to it, it might have a tendency to stain the stamps, which does not harm them, but hurts my little brain. So <laughs> I try to keep them clean. Okay, so these little postage stamp pieces are one and a quarter, well, almost one and three eighths, um, or five eighths, one and, no, one and three eighths. So this is one and a half is what I did my strips at. And then I can come in with glue. <clears throat> And I'm just kind of centering it on there. Then you can either lay it in your trimmer or you can just cut straight across with your snips. But then you would be ready for the next one. Or you can, as you're laying them down, just keep in mind that you need this double of what this is. And you don't even really have to do them in order because we're going to cut them all apart anyway. My lemon lolly stamps orange, not yellow. Hmm. Uh, 
I'm a little curious about how orange that lemon lolly is. I would love to see a picture of it. Uh, if it is indeed like too orange, Stampin' Up! would replace it. Um, I do notice that my pad itself is kind of orange looking, but when I stamp, it's still yellow. Is that one? That's Lemon Lolly. So, I mean, it's kind of orange-ish. But when I stamp with it, I'm still very pale. So is, I mean, is it more orange than that? It's kind of a bright lemon yellow. I have had people occasionally, luckily not very often, but once in a great while, someone will get an ink pad and it will have the wrong pad inside of it. Like it'll get all the stickers for one color and then the pad will be something else. Um, so that is a possibility. Um, I don't know if you're a demonstrator or a customer, but demonstrators can call Stampin' Up! directly and even email them if that's easier and include a photo and they will be quick to replace it. Yeah, someone in the UK did make this and I saw it and yeah, that was not in English and it was all metric. And so I just kind of took the idea and converted it to inches. Okay, so now that I have them all on my strips, I can either, like I said, cut them with the snips like I did the first one, or we can bring in the trimmer if that makes everybody think, breathe easier. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of centering on the little posts there so that my blade is cutting down the middle. Then when this one doesn't have the other, I know that I'm just lining up with that post and it should make it the same. Now these will not touch. They're all gonna be on separate little things. So it's gonna be okay if they're not exact, exact. Likewise, on the stamping, you know, I was eyeballing it. I know that made some of you nervous. Because when we line them up, there's the rare chance that they don't exactly, exactly line up on the bottom. See how close we got. Come on, quit sticking on my fingers. See, so that one is a touch small. This one's bigger than this one. And then if I take my ruler, I may, see, you see how they kind of, they do, they jump a little. I am not straight, straight, but I'm going to go with it because I'm going to say that was on purpose because nobody's going to notice. I don't think any of you looked at my card and went, oh my gosh, goodness, the letters are not even. And to kind of help with that, you'll notice this one, I've only got three lines below it and this one I've got six. So I went down, up, down, up, down, up as I went across. So 
So Mary, feel free to contact me if you need further help with that um, lemon lolly, because if it is indeed orange and it's not supposed to be, Stampin' Up! will correct it. They are really good about that. Because the ink is supposed to match the paper, which is supposed to match the ribbons. I mean, that's the whole premise of Stampin' Up! is that everything color coordinates. And so if yours isn't, they, they will fix it. Okay. So now I'm just going ahead and putting in my letters. Like I said, I'm going a little wonky on purpose. Still centering, but going up, down, up, down. I'm going to be happy if I just put my letters in the correct order. You know how I get when I start talking. Things don't always go down right. <laughs> Now the letters on the front, those are a different story because they are all on the same piece of paper and we can't, I mean, you could, you could take your stamps and you could make the letters wonky on purpose. That's totally an option, but somebody asked me for ways to make it straight. So that's what we're going to work on today. Now, because this has birthday all the way across the inside, there's not really room to put your message. So you may want to put a four by five basic white on the back so that you have an area to write your message. Okay, and then these are what I'm gonna be stamping happy on. So one of these is an inch and a half. I believe right yeah inch and a half by five and this one's two by five because that's what I'm going to mount behind it now this is where I need happy to go all the way across and be straight so one way we can do that is that we can take a pencil and a ruler and we could draw a line and then we could set our stamps on that line and then go back with the pencil after the fact um, another thing you could do is try to align them all on one block. So if we took, now it's not going to have all the letters because we don't, do we have two P's? We might have two P's. I might be lying. I want to say we did. So I'm just kind of straightening, laying them out on this grid paper. And I think I have two P's, so I can do that correctly. If I did not have two P's, what I would do is put an R down there because an R and a P take up about the same amount of space. So we're going to line this all up till we're happy with it. And then I can take one block and pick it up. Now that one shifted. But looking straight down from the top. Okay, then I would take this off and stamp this part. And then um, you could come back and put the second P in there. Now you would, of course, have to make sure that the distance that you're putting them on the block will allow you to stamp straight down. Now I probably put, I did, I put them too far apart, so it's not going to fit on there. I would need to bunch the letters closer together in order to do that. Or I can take a bigger piece of cardstock. This one is two and a half because I have a one inch ruler. And I'll show you why. 
<clears throat> so I have my one inch ruler. And what I could do is take like little clips of some kind. And say I want it to be about that much off the bottom. And I could come in here. And then when I was to stamp my, with my letters, I would be butting up to the, the metal. I don't know if you can see that. But as I'm stamping, I'm pushing down with my stamp and making sure that the edges of it are hitting that ruler. And if I did that with all of them, they're going to be the same height or the same, yeah, the same height. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, we can use the stamp apparatus if you were smart enough to buy one before we quit selling them. Um, I love my stamp apparatus, and one of the reasons is the lettering and the fact that it has the grid lines built into the plate. So if you have one, absolutely bring out your stamp apparatus. But I have to explain another way for those people that didn't get one before they were gone. Um, Again, it's just like all my other stamps, as I'm always saying, I put them on the grid paper, I align them on the bottom, you know, make sure that I'm straight and then I'm making sure my block is straight too. That's gonna help. Like I said, I think this ruler idea, short of using the stamp apparatus, this is gonna be probably the most helpful. Um, or like I said, you can draw a little pencil line and then you could come in and stamp. And because these are photopolymer, that helps you out because we can see right through them. And so you should be able to look straight down from the top. Again, I'm getting my head in the camera. And see, I'm pretty close to that pencil line. So if we did that all the way across, it would work. Um, one of the things too that I will do is I'll sometimes lay all the letters out. Cause remember when I said it didn't quite all fit on the one when I laid it out with the block. Is this five inches? Oh, this is five and a half. Okay, that's why they're all fitting. Okay. So um, you would maybe want to lay them out, make sure they're all going to fit. Um, another thing I will do is these are pretty uniform. Some um, stamp sets are not, but these letters seem to be pretty equal distance. I mean, other than the I up there, most of our others are fairly uniform. So I could come in and do the H and then come over here and do the Y because it has to all be within that. And then I would take the middle one. Come on. So my middle letter is a P. And then I'm going to fill in. So I was able to stamp my H and my Y out to the edges, then put the P in the middle. You may even want to use a ruler or a pencil mark, something. And then I'm, so I centered the P between the H and the Y. And then I'm going to center this P between these two. So by splitting the difference each time, it helps me keep that straight. So Ginger, hopefully that answered some of those questions you had from last week about how to align those letters. And I mentioned multiple ways because everybody's going to be comfortable with something different. Somebody may be really happy going, you know, from one side over to the other. Some people like it all on one block. Some people like the splitting the difference ideas. So whatever you are most comfortable with, do that. 
Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to erase my pencil line. Probably should have waited for the ink to dry. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to cut this down to one and a half. Let's go. Ugh, maybe I didn't get quite centered. Okay, let's go one and three quarter. And all I'm doing is I'm centering the letters. So one and three quarters looks a little better. And that's still going to fit on my two inch strip. Now, again, these kind of barely match up. Um, there's a little bit of an overhang. Sometimes I will make one of them too long on purpose so that I can come in and just cut off the edge after they're aligned. And there's our happy. So happy birthday. So I always ask who likes this one? Who's gonna give this card a try? Christy said she has the metal ruler, but not never thought of um, using it to line stuff up. It is. It's, and I help. I did it with clips. I've also in the past done it with um, like that tacky tape, like post-it tape. You can tape it to your table. Um, there's a couple different ways. The, the just the idea is you want some kind of an edge, something that the stamps can butt up against and hit so that they're all you know hitting it at the same spot that'll be the most likely to have them all line up so has everybody put in hashtag prize patrol That's how you're going to get today's card. And when you go fill out the little claim form, you're going to go to my website, queenbeecreations.net. And um, in the address bar, put slash prize patrol. And you're going to claim your prize and whether or not you want Starry Sky or Orchid Oasis. And then y'all are going to come back Thursday. Hoping I don't have blue on my fingers. And we're going to make this adorable little baby card. So I have zero babies in the house, but I always have baby wipes because they seem to be the best thing to get ink off my fingers. So I'm not transferring it to the next card. But Thursday's card is this baby card. And it's a triple pop-up cube so it's another one that's going to display and pop up like building blocks so again i've done one of these before you can see on my blog maybe two years ago i did a fall card that was bigger blocks and it had um, pumpkins all over it. it was really cute but it did not fit into our standard card envelope so this one will when it all folds up it is the right size to fit into an envelope so this will be thursday's card Make sure you come back and watch. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and add our prize patrol. 
Again, hopefully everybody has entered hashtag prize patrol into the comment box. That's how you get to be today's winner is I'm going to spin a wheel in the background and see who our winner is. And then they will go to my Google form to give me their address so I know where to send it to. So here we go. <laughs> Ginger made some comment about never winning the drawing and look at that. She won again. So congratulations, Ginger. You know your way to the claim form to go give me your address and I will be popping these in the mail. I actually have your other two over there because it was too thick for a standard postage stamp. So now I can put the three of them together, <laughs> pop them in the mail for you and you will get them soon. So come back on Thursday and we'll make this really cute pop-up baby card. Thanks for joining me. Bye.